We're going to continue our discussion of sizing steel columns for some common sectional shapes. In the previous exercise, we looked at pipes, uh, HSS square sections, and wide flanges under light loads. And now we're going to um, compare those column performances under heavy load cases. So by heavy load, in this case, we're going to put the dead load at 100 kips, the live load at 200, and then we'll have a factored load of 440. Um, this is 1.2 times 100 plus 1.6 times 200. <clears throat> and we're going to take an effective length of 14 feet, which could be uh, not an uncommon floor-to-floor -floor dimension in a multi-story building. And so the brace bracing of the column would occur essentially at every floor diaphragm. So here we have the column cross-section, the general nomenclature for it, pipe, HSS square, wide flange. We're going to size to find the lightest section in each of these categories that will be satisfactory for supporting that load. Then we're going to record the self-weight of that column and then finally the column efficiency and I remind you that the column efficiency is the load that's being supported divided by the self weight of the column which will be the self weight in pounds per foot times the length of the column which in this case is 14 feet. Alright so we are looking for a 14 foot long pipe column that will safely support 440 kips. So here we're, we're towards the heavy end of the table. Um, this is 12 inch standard, uh, 12 inch nominal pipe. We have an extra strong version which has a thick wall and a standard version which has a more normal wall. It turns out the only thing in this table that's going to work at an effective length of 14 feet is the pipe 12 extra strong. Uh, this doesn't go high enough, this doesn't go high enough, and so forth. We can go down to this double extra strong. It will work um, at, at a pipe diameter of 8 inches, but it weighs 72.5, whereas the extra strong 12 inch pipe uh, only weighs 65.5. So our, our column of choice in the case of steel pipe is going to be the pipe 12 extra strong. So we got to record that here. For pipe we put 12 inch extra strong 65.5 pounds per foot and when we take 440,000 pounds and we divide that by 14 times 65.5, <coughs> we get 400. We're now talking about a column that's performing fairly decently. It's supporting 480 times its self-load. And in fact, if we went and looked at what it could hold, it's a bit more than that. But for this particular experiment, we're just dividing by whatever our design load was, and that's the ratio that we're coming up with. So now we're going to go look for an HSS square column. And again, we're 14 feet to support 440 kips. And when we scan along here, we see that a 12 by 12 by 5 16 works. This is 471 and we're looking for 440. Um, on the other hand, when we come over here and we scan across, here's one that works that weighs slightly less. This is 47.8. This one was 48.8. And the lighter of the two is this. So it's a 10 by 10 by 3 8 So when we come back, we're going to record 10 by 10 by 3 8 And the weight, self-weight, is 47.8 pounds per foot. So if we multiply that in pounds per foot times 14 and then divide it into 440,000, we get 658. 
Now we're really cruising. We've got columns that are supporting almost 700 times their own weight. Now we're going to go design the column at an effective length of 14 feet. For 440, we scan along and we see this just barely works. Um, but we don't care that it just barely works. That's fine with us. Uh, because we have all of our resistance factors accounted for and all of our load factors accounted for. So this is a W10 by 49. So we'll go record that. We have W10 by 49. The 10 means its nominal depth is 10 inches uh, and its weight is 49 pounds per foot. And when we take the 440,000 pounds and divide it by 14 times 49, we get 641. And if we highlight a few boxes, we see right there is the winner. Um, the HSS squared and the wide flange are very similar in strength. Now, to sort of summarize where we are, we have very high loads. As a consequence, we're getting columns with large breadth. As a consequence, we're tending towards fat proportions rather than slender. And so yield of the material is more crucial generally than buckling. <clears throat> and as a consequence, the materials with a higher yield stress are performing better. Uh, the wide flanges are about 50 KSI. HSS square is 46 KSI pipe is way down around 35. So that's why I, I've shown in red here the pipe is clearly the poorest performer. Uh, we're in the fat regime. It's a low stress grade material, so it's not doing particularly well. And the fact that it's a, uh, a hollow round shape, which is the ideal shape for resisting buckling, turns out to not be too crucial because even the wide flange has billowed up to the point that it's not particularly governed by buckling. <clears throat> there may be still a little bit of buckling phenomenon going on, which may be why the, the wide flange is not performing quite as well as the HSS. Other factors occur here that might account for why the HSS is slightly better, one of which is we tend to go in very coarse increments in the jumps of things like wide flanges and pipe, whereas the HSS tends to give us more op options and we tend to go in smaller increments uh, in terms of the quantum jumps from one size to another, which could be why this one is fine-tuned enough that it's the winner out of all of this. <clears throat> now, we have done two sizing operations one for the heavy load, and one we did previously for the light load. So I'm going to make comparisons between them. What I want you to note, though, before I leave this slide is the higher stress grades are working better here, 46 KSI and 50 KSI. Those columns are the ones that are working better, <clears throat> generally, because we're in a fat regime, and yield stress is the primary material property that's affecting things. On the other hand, when we go to the results we got previously for slender columns, you'll notice that the best performers are the hollow sections, either the round pipe or the HSS square, and the wide flange is performing relatively poorly because its cross-sectional shape is not very well designed for resisting buckling. <clears throat> the other comment I want you want to make is our performance is very high in terms of column efficiency whenever we're talking about uh, generally fat columns because we're getting as much out of those columns as we can. We're able to drive the stress level up much higher, much closer to the yield stress and as a consequence we're getting more efficient use of the material. When we go to the more slender Lightly loaded slender columns, <clears throat> buckling is undermining the performance of our column, and the column efficiency, which is the ratio of what's held to the self-weight of the column, is way down. 60 is really low compared to 658 or 641. 
In other words, efficiency-wise, these columns are doing at least 10 times better than the lightly loaded wide flange, which is severely limited by buckling. So, we've reached a point where we can draw some fairly uh, profound conclusions about patterns that we see. So the question is, why do we tend to see certain columns in certain locations? And we'll run through some examples. If we're dealing with a multi-story building, typically towards the bottom of that building, the loads have gotten large enough. The columns are inherently uh, pretty substantial. They have substantial breadth. They're not very slender. And the details of the cross-sectional shape become less important at that point. So we tend to see wide flange columns in multi-story buildings. Wide flange columns are also much easier to make attachments to. And because of the number of various kinds of connections that have to occur at the floor levels and the roof level, the wide flange steel columns tend to be preferred. On the other hand, if we go into a big box store with a 24 foot tall column, and this one is just a zoom up to the top, so you're not seeing the full length of this column, but in a big box store, such a column tends to be either square and cross section or round, but they, whatever it is, they're almost always hollow. Um, and we mentioned that part of the benefit of the uh, use of it here is that you have very few connections and most of those connections are occurring right up near the top. Um, so the complexity of making connections to the hollow section are not nearly as problematical as they would be in a multi-story building. We also tend to like closed sections in big box stores because of things we mentioned earlier, like not wanting to get forklift trucks hooked on the flanges or have people bash their shoulders against the flanges of wide flange columns. But the primary reason is tall, lightly loaded columns tend to be slender, and those are the circumstances under which choosing the best possible cross section is desirable. And then if we really want to go one step further in the extremes, we can ask ourselves what happens when we have super tall, very lightly loaded columns. And even there, it's no longer practical to use standard hollow steel sections there. Even those sections will tend to be too thick in the wall and not structurally efficient. And that's the point at which we really start doing elaborate things like creating these large billowed up uh, truss columns as a way of increasing the breadth and reducing uh, the tendency to buckle. So that concludes our discussion of the sizing of steel columns out of standard steel sections.